The school officer throwing a 12-year-old student to the ground. Cell phone video shows the deputy grabbing the student around the neck. A school police officer hitting and kicking a young man. A series of violent encounters between students and police has been making national news and raising questions about the role of police in schools. Eight-year-olds in handcuffs, students suspended for stick figure drawings. We are putting it in their minds that they are criminals, and that may be what we wind up with. How did we get here? 30 years ago, many schools were fed up with crime and violence. Just about every month, there's a gun, some type of gun. And the government called for more police and zero tolerance for violence at school. Zero tolerance means you don't put up with anything. If the student broke the rules, you wouldn't tolerate it. You just put them out. We're going to get rid of, we're going to forget, we're going to warehouse these bad kids in a way that we've never done before. We have a connection between our school system and the criminal justice system that did not exist before and that I don't think should exist now. Just one more victim of a violent crime wave that's sweeping many of the nation's public schools. In the 1980s, news reports were filled with schools that appeared to be on the verge of chaos, places not of learning, but of fear and violence. Rape, arson, and attempted murder. It's dangerous even to go to school now. And East Side High in Patterson, New Jersey, was considered one of the worst. The meanest, toughest school in North Jersey. Drugs, dropouts, trouble. Kids would get jumped and beat up for their sneakers or their coats, their bombers. Zatidi Moody was a student at Eastside when a principal named Joe Clark became a symbol of a tough new approach to discipline. Caught in the hallways without a pass, that means suspension. The school is in despair and, and there's kind of hopelessness all around you. But he was fighting for our right to have an education free from interference. I'm going to carry this back. Any drug pusher I see trying to enter into those 35 doors, I'm going to beat the hell out of them. But Clark also did something even more controversial to get the school under control. He forced out 300 students because, as he saw it, they were the hardcore troublemakers. He had the kids in the auditorium, and he said, you are undercredited, you are overaged, you will never graduate from this high school. And he had the guard uh, walk him to the door. There are some people you are not going to save. They are incorrigible. Removing those students, that was a bold approach to education. The man's name he became a national Clark. icon. Clark is one of the best known school principals in America, the Rambo of public education. And a movie based on Clark made the power of strict discipline part of popular culture. By the time Lean on Me came out, Clark had clashed with the school board over his tactics, but tough discipline was spreading to other schools as reports of gun violence were starting to rise. Last year alone, there were 35 violent deaths in schools. One student shot and killed another in a hallway. Kids killing or being killed has emerged as a potential national crisis. We're not talking about kids who were doing routine kinds of bad things in school. These were kids with guns who were murdering other kids. There was a real concern that um, we were just losing, losing control as a society. Um, we've got to be tough. and We have to take those young people who are, in essence, predators, even at a young age, and separate them from uh, the rest of society. By the mid-90s, when Eric Holder was deputy attorney general, getting tough in schools had already become national policy the federal government mandated immediate expulsion for anyone who brought a gun to school. The policy came to be known by a single phrase. Zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. Zero tolerance for guns and drugs in schools. People were looking for ways to put up rings around schools to reduce the possibility that um, violent crimes could occur. Then in 1999, a mass shooting captured national attention. It's happened again. A mass shooting at an American school, Columbine High in Littleton, Colorado. It has been a horror. Columbine added fuel to the push for more school security. Parents across the country are demanding to know what their schools are doing to keep their children safe. The federal government devoted hundreds of millions of dollars to adding more police in schools. 
there was the need in some neighborhoods for a police officer presence to, to be there. The hope was to make schools safer, to make our nation safer. Ten years later, Eric Holder came back to government, this time as attorney general. He began to look into the impact of zero tolerance policies. It turned out school violence had already started to fall before the policies were fully implemented. But the effect of zero tolerance on students was startling. Some of the numbers that were presented to me, I actually thought had to be wrong. For years, schools had been suspending more than three million students a year. And it wasn't just for guns. Seven-year-old Lamont Agnew was kicked out of the second grade for 45 days for bringing toenail clippers to class. And with more police in schools, the police were handling more discipline problems and arresting tens of thousands of students. Investigations would find that in some schools, the most common charge was disorderly conduct, like kicking a trash can. Things that were routine infractions when I was growing up and might have landed you in the principal's office, uh, you ended up in a police precinct. I don't remember one kid um, in the time that I was in the public schools in New York City who ever got arrested. And Holder saw something even more troubling in the data. Black kids are three times more likely to be suspended or expelled than their white counterparts. They are much more likely to be treated harshly for the same conduct. If you are suspended or expelled, um, you're much more likely to drop out. If you drop out, you are much more likely to become involved in the criminal justice systems. And this has a huge, huge impact on the lives of uh, young people. Zero tolerance changed Jeremy Hudson's life when he was 12. He says one day before school, he helped his mom poke a hole in her belt with a multi-tool. Consists of pliers, nail filers, can opener, uh, corkscrew. I went to school that day, and I'm sitting in class, and it fell out my pocket. Under the school district's zero tolerance policy, it was considered a weapon. He was expelled and arrested. Took me in handcuffs, took me to the police station. I was at the police station until like 2 o'clock in the morning. He was sent to another school, but he soon stopped going, ran away from home, and was later arrested a few more times, including for stealing a car. I think I would have had a lot more opportunities if that one incident was handled a little bit differently. I wouldn't have had a juvenile record. I think my life would have took a different path. He now works with the families of other young people who have been arrested. Most of my kids that I work with, their problems come from school. The reality is, you know, kids are kids. They uh, do things that are disruptive. They do things that are bad sometimes. We put in place a, a series of zero tolerance policies um, that might have been aimed at, um, at gun violence, but that had a, a, a much more all-encompassing effect. In 2014, Holder worked with the Department of Education to issue new guidelines, warning schools that it was time to rethink discipline. A routine school discipline infraction should land a student in the principal's office, not in a police precinct. My view of things uh, has, has probably evolved, but that's only because of my willingness to accept um, facts. I thought that what are we doing to public education? And why are we permitting this to happen? And if we're setting that kind of example, I can't... I can't tolerate it. I can't be a part of it. Bertie Simmons has been taking a different approach to discipline since she became principal of Houston's Fur High. What we attempt to do is to restore relationships, have an opportunity to go and talk through the problems calmly. Problems that can't be resolved are sent to a student court, which recently sentenced two students accused of falsifying permission slips. Jurors, these two young men have been charged. The consequences are academic. We don't give punitive consequences. The court has decided that we're going to have you do two-page research paper on the consequences of forgery and the legal... Simmons credits the discipline policy with transforming Fur High into an award-winning school. The graduation rate was 57% when she arrived in 2000. It's 90 plus now. If you just treat people with kindness, it's far better than being so punitive. Today, many schools across the country are moving away from zero tolerance, 
but some say they still need strict discipline. At Joe Clark's old school, Zatiti Moody is now co-principal. When he started, he moved dozens of the most disruptive students out of the school and sent them to alternative schools for kids with behavior problems. Disrupting the class, dis disrupting the teacher, disrupting the lesson, that's the worst crime you can commit in our school. But now, he's also trying to do things differently. It's more than just getting tough. I think a kid who, who, who causes this type of disruption, who takes away from the, the environment, needs more school, not less school. You can't educate unless you have order in your school. And Clark was able to do that. He felt the best thing was to move the students out. Back then, there were no alternatives, and that was the disservice to really a generation of students. I think the pendulum swung too far in the wrong direction in the, uh, in the 1990s. I don't think there's any question that um, fear drove uh, a substantial part of uh, this policy making um, and led to these, uh, these policies that we are trying to understand now, and in many cases trying to, uh, to unravel.